welcome whoever's watching this far away and those of us that are near. That the, the Lord of all creation is near to every person. And here's what goes on in this room today. The, the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. The love of God is reaching out to embrace our hearts so that those hearts know that they are loved. So that all their hope and all their boldness is fixed in the presence of the living God. And we're not relying on ourselves anymore. We're learning that we can rely on God who loves us. So Father, we thank you that yes. you are so reliable. Thank you, we Father. thank you, Father, yes. for sending your servant, Rudy, and Sharon in the other room. Thank we God. thank you, Father, that you continue to raise them up to put the glory, enemies under glory, their feet glory, and see yes. the people of God glory. rise with the glory and the love of glory. Jesus Christ. Thank you now, Father, as we, as we choose to say yes, Lord. Yes. We hear what you plan for us yes. today. Amen. Amen. Mark Fields in song. Well, Kevin asked if I would lead us in a manly song. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, what is a manly song in the church? And I remember going to Promise Keepers and having 50,000 men sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So we're going to sing Holy, Holy, Holy this morning. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to
he comes and he, he has a need to hear from God. He says, what am I going to do in this situation? First thing I want you to know is, um, God does not only speak when the sun shines. <laughs> you know, uh, when, when you feel like, oh man, this is a glorious day, everything's hunky-dory, I'm happy, everybody's happy, my wife's happy, the kids are happy. Uh, you know, it's almost like vacation. <laughs> God must be smiling on me. Now I can hear from heaven. Uh, uh, he speaks in those situations, but God's voice is also available to us in tough situations. When, when things are going out of order, when, when, when uh, I mean, seems like there's a blow up in the family or circumstances are pressing you, uh, on every side and you don't know what you're going to do next where you're going to get this and how are you going to navigate when when you the problems are so complex that you don't know how to unravel them uh you know i have a duffel bag at home where you know i, I put all my electronic cables in if, you, if i see a cable laying around it goes to the duffel bag and then until i need it so then I go in there and, uh, you know, trying to reach one cable is all in one bundle. <laughs> you know, that's just aggravating right there because you spend your valuable time trying to uh, just go buy a new one. You know, that's kind of how you feel. But complex situations happen like that. And, uh, you know, when you're in that frustrating moment, you try to detangle and analyze and what is going on, where's the problem, what am I going to do, how am I going to handle this, that's a very valuable time to just hear from heaven. Amen. You know, God, okay, <laughs> give me an out here. Just tell me what to do, how to do it, how to handle myself. That's very important. Um, you know... Circumstances become emotional, and when emotions get in the way, you know, they, they kind of can get in the way of hearing God's voice. Yeah. Um, you know, because <laughs> you, you cannot just rely on happiness or feeling good to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. When you feel bad, you need to hear God's voice, mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of things happening in a Backwards in life, and, and he says, listen, I need, I need from, to hear from God, and this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I want to show you what God showed me. Chapter 2, verse 1, the prophet says, I will stand my watch. Say stand. Stand. And say watch. Watch. And I set myself on the rampart. Say set myself. Set myself. Say rampart. Rampart. And watch to see what he will say to me. Say watch. 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 To, say. to say. And then he says, and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Say answer. Answer. I love your accents. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you, you guys are just amazing. And then uh, say corrected. Corrected. Turn to someone and say, I need more of that. I need, I need more, more of that. So, so what is he saying here? He needs to hear from heaven and he says, this is the steps I'm going to take in my life to get myself positioned to hear from God. He says, I will stand my watch. Now, the word here for stand from the Hebrew can also be translated to still myself, to, to quiet myself. Um, you know, one of the things we need to, to learn is how to eliminate or ignore all the different voices, the noises, the voices and noises around us. Um, how many of you know the devil has a voice? Yes, sir. He will shout you down and he will, he will, it's a, he is a voice of negativity. He is a voice of distraction and destruction. He, he, I mean, he will just shout, and he's like a, a mouse with a megaphone. <laughs> and he'll just keep going, keep going to aggravate you. And, and, mm -hmm. and what, what Habakkuk says here is, wait a second, <coughs> there's a lot of noise, background noise and voices and stuff going on, but I need to hear the voice that really matters. How do I get there? I'm going to still myself. I've got to still myself. Listen, if you're, if you're in turbulent times, if it's kind of rough going, 
You just need to get to a place where you can just breathe, just still your spirit, uh, stand on the Word of God. Get yourself to in a position, in a place, whether it's a mental place, whether it's a physical place. Sometimes you just need to withdraw from all the noise. Get yourself stilled. And I want you to know that this is not a one-time experience in your life. Do this daily. Do this daily. Sharon and I have, have devotions every day um, as, as, as much as we can. So sometimes we do, we, we do it first thing in the morning with a cup of coffee. Other times when, when our mornings are, are, are busy and, you know, some things happen in the mornings, then we do it at another time. But we, we actually make room. We still ourselves. Get the distractions out of the way. Still yourself. As a man, you need to learn to do that. Because here's the reality. We have to give direction to our family. Yes. And if we can get God's direction, not our will, not our direction, but God's will and His direction, man, I tell you what, you are going to avoid a lot of stuff that you don't have to untangle and unravel later on. So still yourself. Find a place of stillness where you can hear from heaven. Uh, like I said, sometimes it's, it's mentally. You just have to switch, switch gears up here and say, okay, Lord, I, you know, my mind's racing. Sometimes um, I used to read the Bible at night before I go to bed, but I found it wakes me up because, I mean... I was, if something jumps out at me and then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to think about that, I might just as well get up, write it down, and just enjoy the, the revelation. So I, I kind of, just that's me, I try to avoid the Word of God. If I have to read it at night, I go to the genealogies or something like that. <laughs> but, but, but it really, it, it quickens me, it wakes up my spirit. Uh, you know, when you want to go to a silent place, don't read the news right before. You know, avoid some of the noise makers, uh, the distractions. Don't open all your bills and then go to, to hear from heaven, you know. Uh, just, just still yourself and say, God, I'm going to just eliminate distraction. I'm not going to think about anything this world can throw at me and offer me. I want to hear, I want to get to a place where I quiet myself in, in, in my spirit to hear from heaven. That's the first thing he does. And then he says, I will stand my watch. You know, the word watch here literally can be translated as sentry on a wall or a guard. It comes from, from the word guard with a sense of duty, a duty, a sentry on a wall watching at night. Now, I was in the, in the army, and uh, I remember going through boot camp before I became a chaplain. It was interesting. They, they had us do guard duty at the, at the, the, the base where, uh, you know, we had to stand duty. And, um, uh, you know, lots of, lots of officers came and gone, and you're just fresh as a, as a troop. You're there, you, you got no rank, but you got a gun, hallelujah. <laughs> and you, you have to make sure, you, you know, you're the access provider. And you've got a duty. And so the lieutenant that, that put you there, he'll test you. You, you. You've got to go up, and if it's a general, you still have to watch, you know, you, you don't look at the insignia on, on, his, on his uniform. You've got to... Get ID, you know, anybody can impersonate anybody. So the guard is very important. You don't have the rank, but you got the gun. Hallelujah. And you, you can say no. You cannot get in. You don't have access. Um, you know, so that's a big duty. And, uh, you know, it's not easy to say no to a major or captain or a lieutenant, even a corporal. Hallelujah. Yeah, because even a corporal is higher than you. But... And when you stand guard at the gate, you have a duty to perform. Amen. And, and, and that's how important Habakkuk sees this. 
He says, I am so in need to hear from heaven that I'm going to still myself like a sentry at a guard, like guard duty. I, I, I feel it's my duty to hear from God. And so I've got to do it. And men, I want to encourage you. Take this as a duty from heaven. You've got to hear from God. God wants to speak to you. He's, he, he's, his voice is out among us. He speaks in so many ways, and we'll get to that. But hear from heaven. It's your duty. Turn to someone and say, you've got to hear from heaven. You've got to hear from heaven. So how do I do that? Uh, besides getting to a place of stillness, to, to quiet myself, to, to, to cancel the you know, noise canceling, it, that works in the spirit. He says, I'll set myself on the ramp hard. Fact of the matter is, nobody else can hear from heaven like you can. For yourself. God has a personal revelation for each of you. And, 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 and it's just so valuable. When you, when you pick up the Bible, God speaks. When you pray, God speaks. God speaks in dreams, in visions. Like El, El told us, where is he? He's Everywhere. here. There he is. <laughs> and and uh, God has that treasure tre chest that he wants to, you to open up and, and draw from. And God wants to reveal himself to you. Every day. And, and, and he says, I'll set myself. You cannot set your spouse to hear from God. That's not what he says. He says, this is for me personally. I've got to hear from heaven. So don't put, put the spiritual authority on anybody else but you. You've got to hear for yourself what God has to say. Hallelujah. And then the rampart here literally means something hemming in uh, a mound, or it, it can even be translated a strong tower. Now, the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous will run into it, and uh, they are safe. So here's another thing. You still yourself, eliminate all the, the noises, but then you stand on a mound, on a high place, on a strong tower. You you go, if you want to hear from heaven, you want to hear Jesus speak, you you do it in the name of the one who speaks. You, 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 you invoke the authority of the name, the strong tower the, of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I run into him and be safe. So, so you invoke the authority of God in your life every day. As a man... You must hear from heaven. How do I do that? I still my, 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 my mind. I get to a place of stillness. I just calm the seas of roughness and circumstance. I don't want any, any, any noise. I want the voice of God. And then I do it in the name of that voice. In the name of Jesus. Um, you invoke the name, the rampart, the strong tower. Now here's something interesting. He says, so, so, so this is all preparation. I'm getting ready to hear from heaven. Hallelujah. I have no other distractions. I'm in a still place. Uh, nobody else. My, my phone is on silent, not even vibrate. I'm not texting. I'm not doing anything. I just want to hear from God. And then I'm, I'm doing it in the name of the Lord. I'm doing it myself. I'm, I'm getting myself prepared. And then he says something that's so amazing. He says, I will watch to see what God will say to me. Now, that doesn't make sense at all, does it? How do you activate your eyes for something the ears should do? He says, I will watch to see what God will say. How many of you know... You cannot see words. You hear them. But he's not saying, I will listen to what God's going to say. He says, I'm going to watch. I'm going to visualize what God is saying. Now, I, 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 I did uh, my doctor's degree on dream interpretation and visionary experience. And... Did you know that I actually counted all the, the verses?
verses in the Bible that in the Bible, more than a third of the Bible, the verses in the Bible has to do with dreams and visionary experiences. That's that's 33 percent. Every you know every one verse out of every three has to do with visionary experience, what you see, what God reveals, and dreams. The original language that every human is born with is visual. It's not audible. When a young, young child, when you give a young child a piece of paper and say, tell me a story, what are they going to do? They cannot write it in paragraphs. They're going to draw a picture. Sometimes they put stuff in weird places. The pictures does not make sense to you when you see it. Uh, you know, there, there might be a man on the moon or, uh, you know, some, it's just weird stuff what, what kids come up with. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just scribblings. You, you cannot make head or tail of it. But if you ask the kid, what is this picture? What are you telling me here? Oh, they'll point out, this is that, this is that, this is that. They're telling you a story. Amen. And then the first thing you do, when you get to school, they teach you how to, how to read and write, which is important, right? But that, the words you start writing takes over you as the primary way of communicating. And you start to forget your picture language, your heart language. Mm -hmm. The heart is all about images, all about pictures. It's all visible stuff. But then when you get to school, if, you, if they say, you know, hey, tell me a story, you write a paragraph. You, you no longer draw a picture. You write a paragraph. We lose something with that because your heart's language is still there. We just suppress it or we subvert it with, with words to describe. Now, that's fine. We, we use words very well and so on. And, you know, if you, if you write paragraph really well, you could, when you listen to the paragraph, see the picture. Yeah. That's kind of that's why movies are so so potent. People watch movies. Why? Because they can see it. They don't read the script. Or some people love to read the book and then watch the movie. Oh, they messed up that movie because uh, in my mind, I saw it differently. You see, so your mind and your heart constantly translates words into pictures. So this is what the prophet is speaking about. He says, I will watch to see what God is saying. We have the Bible. I have it here on my iPad. Because we travel, you know, I, I, write, I read so many books at the same time. I have it all on one, one device. Even the Bible, all translations that I use. It's right here. But, but it's all in word form. So it's paragraphs. It's verses. When I read this verse... I don't just see words. I visualize what is he saying. I want you to see the prophet. He's in turmoil. He needs to hear from heaven. So it's just chaos around him. He needs to get to a place where he can see and he can hear from God. So he gets up the mount, up the strong tower where he has a visual over all the territory. Every angle the enemy can attack from. All the, the, the harvest fields outside of the, of the town, he can watch over. Now he's in an elevated place. He still, he does not hear all the moanings and groanings and voices and all the, he's just, Lord, speak to me. And he says, now I'm going to watch how God lays it all out for me. That's what I see when I read this. And that's what we should do. Listen, God wants to speak to you. Visualize what He says. Vision. Get a picture of heaven. You know how you get your mind on Jesus? You see Him. You look at Him. You know? You just keep your eye on Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Our eyes fixed on Jesus. Because He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Every day, get a picture of Jesus. 
someone said in in counseling, you know, when when uh, you know someone goes for counseling and they say, oh, this is my problem, this is my problem, this is my problem. A good counselor, a Christian counselor, will, will go back and say, okay, now see Jesus in that situation. What is Jesus doing in that situation? Where is Jesus? Where's the light? Go to the light. Find Jesus. Look for Jesus. Oh, it's just dark around. Well, Jesus is there somewhere. Because he'll never leave you, never forsake you. Where is Jesus? Find Jesus. Look for Jesus. Go see him. That's what he's saying. I will watch to see. What God is speaking. Some people make the, the, the mistake of just, you know, you want to hear from God and you're waiting for an audible voice. Like a deep bass baritone. Yeah. Rudy. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget, I may have shared this before here, but it's such a good story. There was a pastor in South Africa and they built this, this building uh, where the, the administration block was on the second floor, and right beneath the pastor's office window was a, a garage where uh, they, they parked the van, the church van. So uh, every Sunday night, the youth pastor would go and pick up a bunch of kids and uh, you know, bring them to church, and then after church, he had to go drop them off at their, at their houses, and he used the van. And so the pastor had to run to the office when he, when he was, the, the, the service was closed and everything, you know, it was done, everybody's home, uh, and the pastor ran up to his office and did some stuff, and just as he, as he wanted to close up, and he, you know, he, he flicked the switch to, to turn the lights off, he looked and he saw the window in his office above the garage was still open. And he thought, oh, I gotta, I gotta close that. So he walked up to the window in the dark, and as he walks up, the youth pastor's coming with, his, with a van, you know, and uh, they didn't have, you know, like here in America, the, you, you hit the button and the garage goes open. And you, you, it's a manual operation. So. The youth pastor gets out of the van and he's fiddling with the lock of, on the garage, opening it up manually, and the pastor just could not help himself. <laughs> and uh, I think the, the, the youth pastor's name was Johan. And uh, he's saying, he's standing in the window, it's dark, he, you know, and the youth pastor's fiddling with the, with the door, and he, he, the pastor says, Johan. <laughs> And Johan, what is going on? You know, he, he's not seeing anyone. He's hearing the voice. And so, you know, he thought, ah, it's just my imagination. He's fiddling with the garage door. Johan. By now, you know, it, it got his attention. And by the third time, he drops on his knees. A Samuel moment. Speak, Lord! Your servant is listening. So the pastor had to had to correct him and apologize. But you see, those moments are what you and I are waiting for. Wouldn't it be awesome if God just speaks to us? Yo, huh? <laughs> Rudy, you know, it would be awesome. Amen. But God's voice does not come to us that way. Now, God can speak that way, but it does not, need, it does not necessitate any faith. If God speaks audibly, we don't need faith. Because yeah. you recognize His voice. Mm. But you see, God wants us to live by faith, not yeah. by sight, not by feeling. Oh, yeah. And so when we employ our faith, He's going to use methods to stir our faith because our faith makes us strong. It's through faith in Him that we live and have our being in Him. You know, He is Christ in us. And so... The methods that God uses to speak is, is not audible, although He can use audible voice. He uses dreams. He uses visions, pictures, impressions by the, the Holy Spirit, nudges, thoughts, uh, illuminations, revelations. He uses His Word. The Word of God is alive and full of power. There's a pulse. There's a there's a 
the word of God is alive. Jesus is not dead anymore. He's alive. And, and the written word becomes the living word. When you read it, it's, it's a way to hear from heaven. And so, so you watch to see what God will say to you. And then your response is important. If you want God to keep talking, you've got to listen and obey. How many of you know it's the most annoying and frustrating thing to say something to someone that's distracted? They're kind of, they're just busy on their phone and you speaking, you know, your heart out and then they say, huh? <laughs> it, it's just annoying. If, if, you, if you speak and it seems like they're not listening. Uh, and how many times do we do that with God? Here he says, and I will answer. I will answer. The word answer here means to turn or to make adjustments. How many of you know we all need a lot of adjustment in our lives? <laughs> you know, we need course, that, course corrections. Amen. We, we need to constantly change. You know, our, our lives are not on autopilot at all. Um, Tesla may, may have autopilot, but even they have problems. <laughs> Uh, we cannot live our lives on autopilot. We need the direction of God. He knows if there's a left turn, a right curve, an up or a down coming. And we need to hear from Him. I will answer the Lord. Brothers, I want to challenge you. Will you answer God every day? Will you answer Him? Will you pay attention to what He's saying? You know, he nudges, he, he's continually, when, when Peter was out of prison, the miracle came out of prison. He came and knocked on the door. Rhoda came and, you know, heard his, his voice, did not answer, goes back inside where they're praying. Lord, set Peter free, set him free. We cannot, we cannot live without him. He's knocking on the door, he's already free, but they're still praying, set him free, set him free. And, and Rhoda says, he's here, he, he's here, but she, she didn't open the door. But still, Peter kept knocking. That's, that's the character of God. His voice continually comes. He keeps knocking. He keeps knocking. He keeps knocking. Listen, answer the door. Answer the phone. Answer. Just, just respond to God. Make the appropriate adjustments in your life. And he'll keep it. Man, listen. I have... Uh, you know, we came yesterday, so I've, I've done two routes, the GPS took me two <laughs> routes to the church from where we're at, and both of them are curvy up and down. <laughs> I mean, this is not interstate roads right around here. <laughs> it's rolling hills, it's the green pastures of the, what the Bible speaks of, but man, I tell you what, I'm just glad it's green outside and not white. <laughs> Because it, 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 it's a bear to, I'm sure, to drive in on the, these roads in the winter. But you've got to be alert because you don't know where the next turn is going to be. I will answer. Say, I will answer. I will answer. And here's the clincher. He says, when I am corrected. Will you give God permission? Not just permission, but an invitation to correct. We're so self-centered that we think we're right all the time. Guess what? We're not. You might be convinced that you have the best answer, but God's answers are always better. Will you submit to God's teaching? Will you be teachable? Pliable, flexible, honing in on what God has for you. So, this is, this is just the ways to hear from heaven. Number one, I will stand, I will still myself, I will just get to a place mentally, physically, emotionally, where all the noise of this world does not matter anymore. Lord, I want to hear from you. 
I will watch. It's my duty to do it. I'm the guard of my life. I need to hear. Show me. I'm going to stand. I'm setting myself on that rampart, the strong tower of the Lord, where I can watch the enemy come from afar off. No ambushes whatsoever. I'm alert spiritually. Lord, when there's some good news, something positive, I'm going to spot it. Where there's danger, I'm going to spot it. God, I'm seeing, oh, the, the corn is growing on that field. That's awesome. We need to go and just do something over there. You know, you, you, you see the whole territory when you're on the rampart. I will watch to see. I'm not just going to listen one way. Lord, I'm open to you giving me dreams. I want to hear your impressions. I want the, the input from the Holy Spirit. We don't go, I don't call them feelings. It's not what you feel. It's what the Holy Spirit impresses on you. He will bubble up. You know, in, in the Bible, in the, in the Hebrew language, there's two words really for prophecy. For prophecy. Uh, one is false prophecy. One is true prophecy. The one for false prophecy it, it literally means to bubble up, to bubble up. Jesus said in the New Testament, he said, if you believe out of your innermost being shall bubble up rivers of living water. That's, you know, if they're, they're bubbling, it's like an impression, just it bubbles up, it stirs up. That's, that's from God. If it lines up with the word, it's from God. The, the one for false prophecy means to cook up or to boil. Listen, anyone can cook up something. Yeah. You can make a meal. You don't do that with the Word of God. When God speaks, you don't have to cook it up. It bubbles up. It just, it's just ever pheasant. You don't have to put bubbles in there. It's already bubbled. It, it just... It, that's, that's free. You don't have to pay for that. <laughs> and then... Uh, I will answer, Lord, listen, God is not into monologues. He wants a dialogue. He wants a dialogue. He wants you to submit to Him, to speak to Him. You can come and speak. You can give your supplications to Him. You can, you, oh man, I tell you what, that's what prayer is all about, isn't it? Speak to God and God speaks to us. Brothers, that's the word that God gave me for you today. And I pray. That God will speak to all of us. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just before I'm going to pray, I feel like we need to just pray and say, Lord, help us to position. Help us to do these things that Habakkuk did. Help us to be positioned to hear the voice of God. But I think, you know, we need to, we need to answer. We need to, to respond. Maybe you're sitting here or you're listening, you're watching, and you say, Rudy, will you please pray for me? I want to be better positioned to hear from heaven. I, I've been so, so hard-headed and, and, and stubborn-minded or stiff-necked that I just wanted to do my thing, but I want to be pliable. I want to hear from heaven. I, want, I just need God to speak to me in the season ahead. I want, I want to carve out time every day to hear from God. And uh, I want to be included in this prayer where I can just be positioned to hear God speak to me. If that's you, just put up your hand. We're going to pray together. Hallelujah. That's your response. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you that we live a dynamic life. You've given us so much. You, you, you're so good. You're so good to us. And God, you, you've established our lives every day. Lord, we, we, we go every 24 hours we call a day. But God, we, we say this is the day that the Lord has made every day over our lives. Because we walk in grace. We walk in your mercy, in your loving kindness. And Lord, in the midst of your blessing, you still speak and direct and guide us. Lord, you know where the treasures are buried on our pathways. You know where the spiritual blessings are. You know, oh God, where we should navigate and what we should avoid and what is coming ahead. Lord, we pray that you will be the GPS, the God positioning system in our lives to show us left, right, 
up, down. Where are we going to go? Because we do not want to miss your blessing. We do not want to miss your word, your direction, your guidance. And so, God, we pray that you will lead us and guide us, speak to us. Lord, I know that there are brothers here that, 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 that sitting in this room also watching online that are going through difficult circumstances, that are facing challenges. God thinks that uh, they don't have an answer to at this moment, in this stage. God thinks that are confusing, things that are perplexing, things that are pushing them to, to make them feel like they with their backs against the wall and they're all alone. But God, I thank you. You said you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. So I pray right now that you will reveal your word. You will show us your word, your direction. Whisper into our hearts through visions, visionary experiences, impressions of your spirit. Let it bubble forth the answer that we've been looking for. You are the answer, God. We pray that you will simplify complex issues in our lives, that you will show us the way to go. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us employ our faith to hear from heaven. I pray every time we open your word to read scripture, that your scripture will turn from Logos the written to Rhema the living inside of us, and that your name be glorified, lifted up, and exalted in Jesus' mighty and holy name.